Emboss resist is such a fun technique to use with your inks, however it's just as great to use with your watercolours. In today's video I've got three ways to combine emboss resist with your heat embossing and watercolour paints. Whether you've got liquid watercolours, powders or watercolour pans, there's a technique to suit you. It's Verity here on my YouTube channel and blog Pretty Little Button. If you're new here, I make paper crafting tutorials for the everyday crafter. Now watercolour comes in a variety of different ways, whether it's the traditional watercolour pans, liquid watercolours or even in the powder form such as brushos. You can use them and combine them with your heat embossing for emboss resist and I'm combining them with metallic embossing powders from WOW. So let's get started with the first technique. This technique is going to use liquid watercolours to create an embossed resist background. So to start off with, I am using the Love Note background from Catherine Poulet Designs. And as this is a red rubber stamp, I'm just removing the foam pad insert from my Misty stamping platform. To ensure that I get the background stamping continuously over the background, and to be able to hold the card panel, I'm adding a temporary handle to the back of my watercolour cardstock. So I'm just applying some repositionable double-sided tape to the piece of card and then adhering this to the back of the watercolour card panel. And I'm also adding a little bit of repositionable tape on the back of the card panel because I want to place this into my misty panel but because of the red rubber stamp I can't use a magnet. Therefore if I want to re-stamp it a couple of times to ensure my embossing ink is covering the card panel well, I can then make sure the panel is still in the same position. So I'm stamping the background stamp in WOW clear ultra slow drying embossing ink, closing my misty door and pressing down to get a good print. As I said I can re-stamp this a couple of times because I'm using my misty stamping platform. So I'm covering this in WOW metallic gold rich pale embossing powder and I'm using the super fine form. This is because the background stamp is very detailed and fine. By using super fine powders, I'm ensuring that I get to keep all that delicate detail from the writing in the background stamp. Of course, I'm using my dual speed heat gun on heat setting 2 to melt the embossing powder and turn it into a glorious golden shine. To now add some colour to this card, I am going to just first of all apply a clear clean wash over the background of the panel. So I've got a flat brush and I'm dipping this into clean clear water and then I'm just applying this backwards and forwards over the whole background panel to ensure it's wet. Next I'm going to use some liquid watercolours and these are from Pink Fresh Studios but you can use any liquid colour watercolours you have to hand. So first of all I'm using the pipette to drop out some of the aquamarine colour onto one corner of the panel. As it's already wet, it will start to move, but to allow this to move a little bit more, I'm then also going in with some clean, clear water in a spritz bottle. This just allows and helps move the colour more around and allows a bit more movement. The next colour I'm using is Sapphire, which is a really vivid, gorgeous, bright blue. And I love this colour, um, it's so vivid. Again, I'm going back in with the water spritz just to move this um, colour around a bit, but I'm also picking the paper up to help move the colour in the direction I want it to. If I feel like I'm getting too much colour or it's too pigmented, I can use a piece of tissue paper just to mop up some of that colour. For the last colour I'm going in with is Lavender from Pink Fish Studios. Now I didn't quite shake the bottle up as much before I used it and I've got a bit of clumping occurring of some of the pigment. I'm not too fussed about it but just so you're aware that you may want to give yours a little bit of a shake. Again I'm going to use my water spritz bottle to help move the colours and blend them and then I'm just going back in between the colours to make sure that they are a little bit more vivid. Now if you're impatient like me and have a dual speed heat gun, it allows you to dry your cardstock without ruining your heat embossing. So just use heat setting one on your heat gun um, on your card panel and this will give you less speed of the heat and you can move it around more so you're not going to ruin your heat embossing. 
Now you could add colour over the whole panel if you prefer but I wanted to create a little bit more movement with the inks and did a diagonal piece. I'll show you the finished card later on. For the second technique I'm going to use traditional watercolours in their watercolour pan form. Before adding the watercolours I'm first going to create another embossed background so for this card I am using the paint and stripe background from Catherine Pooler Designs. Again it's another red rubber stamp so I don't need to replace my foam pad into my misty again and I'm using the same method of applying a handle to the card panel so I can pick it up later on. Once I've stamped this in my clear ultra slow drying embossing ink I'm then going over this background in metallic copper embossing powder from WOW. This is such a luxurious rich copper when it heats set it is stunning. I didn't get the best impression when I stamped this background so I have got a few patches where I didn't have some ink. I'm not too fussed about this but if you have the same just pop it back into your misty and stamp it again. So the watercolour pan set I'm using is the 36 pan set from Alton New and before I add the colour I'm just going over again with some clean clear water to the background panel so I'm using a wet on wet technique. So the first colour I'm using at the top of the panel is Lagoon and I'm applying this with my flat brush with my flat brush again just to get a nice smooth coverage of the colour. After I've added enough Lagoon I'm then going in with Persian Blue. This is a lovely ultramarine kind of blue and I'm blending this up into the Lagoon. The last colour I'm adding to this background is Midnight Violet and this transitions really well from the Persian blue into this lovely purple when blended together. As I wanted to intensify the colours on the cardstock and as it's natural for watercolours to dry back slightly more muted in colour, I'm going back in and adding a second layer of the same watercolours. But to ensure that they intensify I just need to dry the panel beforehand and I'm using my dual speed heat gun on heat setting one again. Now this is quite a bold background once finished so you may feel that it's too much for you but you'll see in the card later on that I did die cut this down and use part of the background on a card panel to create the card. Okay so for the last technique I'm going to use watercolour powders and the powders I am using are brushos however you can use any watercolour powders that you have to hand. So I've put this background stamp into my misty and this is the sandy background stamp from Catherine Puller Designs. It's a lovely large Mandela stamp set. Because of the card design I had in mind for this I didn't need to stamp the whole design but rather have it offset into one corner. So this allowed me to tuck the card panel in one corner and the stamp hanging off the opposite corner and I, I can stamp this in while ultra slow drying embossing ink. So the embossing powder I'm using for this card design is metallic platinum embossing powder. I used to really love platinum embossing powder and I still do. It's a lovely warm silver gold colour and it's gorgeous but I am now branching out and using more metallics as well. Again I've used the super fine powder just to make sure that I retain all that lovely intricacy of this background stamp set when it was heat set. So to use the brushos you can do it in several ways and the way I'm going to do today is first of all applying the brusho powder onto a dry surface. You will find that watercolour powders go quite a long way and you don't need a lot. I have a little pin in the top of each of my brush o lids. This creates a little hole allowing me to tap out the powder and have some control of how much comes out. So I'm gently tapping out a little bit of turquoise into different areas of the card and I'm then going in with the purple powder again adding small amounts of powder in different areas and then lastly I'm going in with the ultramarine powder and you'll find that ultramarine powder is quite a dominating colour so you may want to go more sparse on this. Once I've got a small amount of powder present, although it's quite small there's still quite a lot of pigment there, I'm ready to add the water. So again I'm using my water spritz bottle um, to spritz water over the pigment powders. This is when the magic starts happening, the water activates the small powder particles and you get such vibrant colours coming to life. Now the more water you add, the more diluted the colour becomes 
um, and blends. However, it blends the colours quite well. So it all depends on what kind of look you're going for. I find as the colours blend, I get more of a tie-dye look, so I really, really like it. If you get any excess colour, again, you can just mop it up with some tissue paper. And if you want to dry it in between powders, you could also do that with your heat gun. Okay, I'm just now going to run through quickly how these became cards and what supplies I used. So for the liquid watercolour background, I die cut a circle out of the background and foam mounted it onto a white card base. I then used the Kudos to You stamp set from Catherine Brewer to create a heat and boss sentiment saying congrats on your new home. And I added a few die cuts using the Winter Haven die set from Catherine Brewer Designs I cut these out of white card and adding them with some dimension. For the watercolour pan background card panel, I also die cut a semicircle out of this panel and foam mounted it offset to one side on a white card panel. Then I layered up a hello die from Catherine Pooler Designs. This was die cut out of black cardstock three times and layered up for dimension, then adhered to the front of the card. I also added a stamp sentiment from the one liner sentiment stamp set, stamping this in blackjack Catherine Pooler ink. For the last watercolour background, where I use powders, I fussy cut around the edge of the Mandela design. There is a coordinating die, which you can use if you have it, and I foam mounted this onto white card base. For the sentiment, I die cut the thanks die from Catherine Pooler Designs out of soft stone and cardstock from Gina K Designs, laying this up three times for dimension. And then I added another sentiment from the one liner sentiment stamp set, adhering it to the front of the card. If you've not tried embossed resif with watercolours, what have you got to lose? It is such a fun technique. And if you love embossed resist with inks, you'll love it just as much with watercolours. If you'd like to check out my personal channel, Pretty Little Button, I have included a link here as well as down below. You'll find 10% discount at the WOW shop by entering the code you can see on screen. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when the next video is up. And why not check out this other video for some more inspiration. Until next time, happy crafting!